So today we're going to learn how to set up an Adonis JS5 and Inertia version 1 project using server-side rendering or SSR. So first let's go ahead and dive into our terminal and get an Adonis JS project set up here. So let's do npm init Adonis TS app at latest and I'm going to call this Adonis Inertia SSR. As it walks us through the step, go ahead and select web. We're going to be selecting web because this will auto include session and the view packages. Adonis Inertia SSR is fine for the project name. You can do yes or no on ESLint but be sure to do yes for Webpack Encore there. Now it's gonna go through, install our dependencies, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, cool, so now I have two terminal windows open here, split side by side. I'm gonna go ahead and CD into the project on both of those. So Adonis Inertia SSR on that one, and CD Adonis Inertia SSR on that one there. You'll see why I have two separate ones open here later on. So now it's time to install the Adonis Inertia Provider Package by Adele. So let's go ahead and do npm i at e-i-d-e-l-l-e-v slash inertia and Adonis JS. Once we have that installed, let's go ahead and configure it. So node ace configure at e-i-d-e-l-l-e-v slash inertia Adonis JS. It's going to ask us what the edge file we would like to use as our root template app is sufficient for that. Be sure to hit yes for SSR and we'll be working with view three here today. It's gonna to go through and install those dependencies. This is also gonna stub some files into our application to get things going. Most notably is going to be the webpack.ssr.config.js. As you might guess by its name, it is our server-side rendering configuration for Webpack. Okay, cool, so that's all the setup we need for now in our terminal. Let's go ahead and jump into our text editor here and let's work on setting up our apps. Yes, two apps. We're gonna have one for our client side and one for our server side. So let's go ahead and dive into resources. JS, let's go ahead and start with our app.js here. So first and foremost, we're gonna to want to import some view dependencies. So let's import create app and h from view. And let's also import create inertia app from inertia view three. We'll need to call create inertia app, providing it an object as its argument. This object will have a resolver function. This resolver function is provided a name. This is the name of the page as defined by the route definition. I'm gonna go ahead and put this into brackets here and let's just grab the page, require, we'll reach inside of a pages directory, which is where all of our root page single file components will live. And then we will go ahead and provide it in that name, meant to use backticks there, there we go. And then just return that page back for now. We're also gonna have a setup method. The setup method will be provided our L, an app, app here is capitalized. Prior to version one, this app was lowercase, but now in version one of Inertia, it is capitalized. So that's one thing to note there. Props, plugins, and then let's go ahead and call create app, provide it a render method, pass in h, pass in app to h along with the props, call use, provide it the Inertia plugin, and then go ahead and mount the provided element. And that should be all that we need for our client side script. And so now we can go ahead and just copy our app file here, paste it within our JS directory. And let's go ahead and rename app SSR. So now we have both an app and an SSR JavaScript file for our two different view entry points here. We can go ahead and get rid of our app.css. We can leave that for the client side to take care of. Create app here is going to change to create SSR app from view. Additionally, we're also going to need something from the view server render. So we'll go ahead and import render to string from at view server renderer. And we're going to need to wrap this create inertia app into a function. So let's go ahead and export default function, call this function render. And this function itself will be provided a page as its argument. We'll want to go ahead and return and then go ahead and return the creation of our inertia app. Within this create inertia app, we're going to want to directly provide the page and views server render function. So as render there, we will provide render to string. And then how we mount our view three application will change here a little bit. So let's go ahead and return create SSR app, pass in an object. We we'll want to define our render function here as h app props. Again, noting that app here is capitalized with the A instead of lowercase prior to version one, it was lowercase. And then go ahead and use the inertia plugin. That should be our script all set up and ready to go. Oh, hold on a second here. That should be plugin there. And then we no longer need an L to mount, so we can get rid of that. Let me go double check plugin here within app. Yep, sure did, I typed it in wrong. So that should just be plugin there. Okay, cool. So now we should be set up and all ready to go with our scripts. Now we need to go through and configure Webpack for these scripts. So. For the most part, things are going to be ready to go within our webpack config.js. This is our client side configuration. 
Uh, the one thing that we will need to do is go down to go down to the Encore Enable View Loader call here right around line 184 and go ahead and just uncomment that. That should be the only change that we need to make on the client side unless you have additional scripts that you need to set up on your own. And we can go ahead and drop down to our webpack.ssrconfig.js. This should already have our entry point set up for SSR. If you went with a different name, make sure to change it here as well. Um, let's go ahead and scroll down. We'll need to enable that view loader down here as well, right here in this file, it's right around line 145. And let's scroll down to the bottom here as well. We have one more additional change to make. So an important note is that Inertia version one uses ESM. Without SSR, this wouldn't be much of an issue. However, ESM is coming to Adonis.js in version six. So when the Inertia core and Vue 3 packages attempt to import on the server side, we're gonna run into issues. This externals config here is going to allow us to exclude these two packages from our SSR bundle, which allows us to kind of bypass this issue. The alternative approach is to use the legacy documentation for Inertia.js and use the latest stable version prior to version one. Within our Webpack node externals configuration here, we're gonna to want to provide an object and define an allow list specifically designating the inertia js core and inertia js view three packages to be included on this list and this will just exclude it from whatever bundle the server side rendering webpack encore configuration ends up bundling out next we need to register a global middleware from the inertia adonis js provider so let's go ahead and go into our start directory underneath the kernel here and let's dive into our global middleware add an import at ioc e and you should see it up there within the autocomplete. Be sure to select the one specifically for middleware, just like so. Give it a save, and you should be good to move on. Okay, awesome. We should be all set up there. Let's go ahead and create our first page. So within our JavaScript directory, let's go. And, let's put this file inside of a pages directory, and we need to call this index.view. We'll have our template here. We'll just do a div with a simple h1 inside of it. Call this a add home page to this h1. Um, additionally, let's also do a script. We can just make this set up and let's do define props and give ourselves a title prop here. And we can just render out that title just like so there. Next, let's go ahead and jump into our routes. We're just going to overwrite the welcome route here. So we, instead of view here, we just grab inertia. And instead of view render, this would just be inertia render. And instead of welcome, this would just be index. Remember this here points to the particular single file component that we want to render within our pages directory. And then well, let's provide it a state with our title defined and we just pass it in as testing. Cool, so now it's time to go ahead and boot stuff up. So let's do npm run dev over here. And the second terminal here now comes into play because we're gonna to want to run node ace SSR watch. This is going to watch our Webpack Encore SSR configuration that we set up. So this is going to render out our server side scripts. Cool, so that should be all good. Let's go ahead and open up our page here and we should see home page with testing. So everything rendered out perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and open up our inspector. Take a look at the network request. Let's go ahead and refresh to get that to come through. Click on the document request here, go over to response. And if everything worked according to plan, you should see rendered out the actual page contents. Remember scripts aren't going to run within this little preview here. To verify this, we can go ahead and go within raw. And if we scroll to the end of this div here, you should literally see the H1 within there with the text content within it. If server-side rendering was not working at this point in time, this wouldn't be here as it would require our client-side scripts to actually execute in order for it to show up on our page. So one last thing to make sure that we have everything set up here. Okay, let's go ahead and test out a layout. So let's add in a second page. Let's just copy our index page here, paste it in here, rename it, and let's just call it about. Change that there to about. Let's go ahead and take the title out so that we can just use the shorthand here as well as the script. Go back into our routes and we just do route inertia about and designate it to use our about page. Cool. So there's that. Let's dive into our JS, create a new file. Let's call this layouts and we'll call this app.view, give ourselves a template, give ourselves a div, give ourselves a navigation. We'll import a component here called link, set the href to our home path, designate that as our home URL. Do the same thing here for our about page. And then we'll have a main and provide it a slot so that our actual page contents can show up. Do a script, we can do a setup script here, and we're just going to import link from 
at inertia.js view 3 and we can dive into our app.js here. Let's go ahead and import our layout from layouts app.view. And within our resolve method here, after we've grabbed the page, we'll want to just do page default because whenever you require a page, it's put it within a default object dot layout equals page default layout. So if we do have a layout defined on the page itself, go ahead and use it. Otherwise, go ahead and just use that layout component there. Let's go ahead and copy this, save that. And here comes another important note. So we need to duplicate this change over to our server side app creation. Otherwise, our layout will only be rendered on the client side and not on the server side. So let's go ahead and jump back into our browser, give it a refresh. You can see that we have our navigation components up here for our home and our about link. But if we dive into our document file here, we don't have that. So you can see there's a differentiation going on between the client side and the server side, the client side using the layout, the server side not. So we have a differentiation there, and that's why it's important to go ahead and copy those changes over to both files, import layout from layouts app.view, give that a save, jump back into our browser. Now if we refresh, take a look at that document request. Now we have it. And so we should also be good to go ahead and jump between our about page and our home page just fine. And it will do its traditional inertia thing by sending out requests and getting back just the data that it needs to serve up the correct page for the designated route. So that should be all that you need to do to set up Adonis.js and Inertia.js using their latest current versions. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.